Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Would you look at this beautiful example of a porcini mushroom? Oh, somebody's had breakfast out of it already. So, porcini, penny bun, sep, whatever you like to call them. We're out at just gone seven o'clock in the morning with the dogs, and we're in between an oak tree, a silver birch, another oak tree. Absolutely perfect habitat for this particular what I like to call king of the mushrooms so I'm just gonna have a quick walk around because where you find one you'll find some more um, it's worth noting that I've spotted a root on the floor there so that looks like somebody's been here before me and found some the other day we do see quite a lot of Eastern Europeans walking around here these days looking for mushrooms which is fine by me they're as entitled to pick and forage as much as I am um, but I do tend to find that they kick over the native species um, with somewhat more of a disregard than perhaps I would I tend to leave things that I'm not going to pick and eat I don't know maybe it's just because they want to get through more um, foraging distance than I do. I'm walking the dogs mainly. This is just an absolute uh, bonus when I come across something like this. So, walking the dogs this morning, a bit of foraging, and then we're off into work to brew a beer. Yeah, a double IPA, believe it or not, for Christmas. That's one of the Amanita varieties, a panther cap, I think that could be. And, uh, well, if I find any more beauties, I'll be sure to whip the camera out. Well, I think we found another one. Another little beauty sat here, look, in the grass. Ah, oh, this is a different variety. So... This is a birch bullet, I believe, because of the scaly um, impression on the skin. Still edible, but not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for penny buns today. So we'll pop that back in the ground. Perhaps shouldn't have picked it. There's another one. Again, I don't think it's a penny bun. The stem is too, too narrow, as you'll see under there. So the difference being... The penny buns have a really fat, chunky stem, and when you chop them up and dry them, the majority of the mushroom can actually be in the stem itself, which makes for really good eating. Our friendly deer are out again this morning. Let's just pop out from the side. There they are, two of them. Oh, they're off. They've spotted me. They must think I'm up to no good. They weren't very far away this morning either. It's always nice to catch them first thing. I've been really quite lucky. I've had lots and lots of viewings of the deer over the past few months. What have we got here? Oh, this is definitely not a uh, sep. A different variety altogether. We'll not be picking that one, but we are going to go across to where the deer were because they're rather partial to a nibble on a porcini. So, who knows? They might have hit the hot spot over there. Let's go and have a look. There's a nice little trail we can follow here. So, this is where they were. Chance has picked up the scent, but something I've spotted is a lovely red rushula here, and uh, just look at the colours on that. I suppose it doesn't do it justice on the camera. It's a lot paler red stroke purple than it looks on the cam. So look at this habitat. It's absolutely perfect for seps. We've got oak trees. We've got silver birch. More oak over here. And of course on the floor, this bottom of moss, if you like, mixed in with the grass, indicates a certain level of moisture. And... A little trick that I found recently, if you go on the north side of the tree earlier on in the season, 
that's where you'll tend to find the fruiting bodies pop up first because it's a little bit more moist a little bit more damp for them and then as you progress through the season you can move around to the south side of the tree where as the uh, weather gets cooler and moister the rest of the mushrooms will start to appear that's my theory anyway whether there's much truth in it or not I'm not sure but practically it worked for us this week and I've not shown you but we've got a uh, dehydrator absolutely rammed full of porcinis from our walk on the weekend the sun's just starting to come up now over the back of the trees there Reggie's having a whale of a time he's wet through and we've just walked through this little section here we've got an oak there we've got a silver birch here and just at my feet I found this beautiful example it really is gorgeous I think this has come up this morning or yesterday and I've just trimmed it back kept most of the stalk and as you can see it's in wonderful condition inside and look how pale and white those spores the, the pores are even so I'm going to continue down this way hopefully we find more of the same well that's just two this morning so not too many it is worth noting that uh, there is another one down here but it's been nibbled out and something's probably trodden on it so I've decided to leave that one then that should hopefully drop some spores at some point there's the sunshine oh you little beauty right let's keep looking this sun will help us find some as well it's been a bit tricky because it's been dark at the bottom under the trees so fingers crossed good boy chance so we've got a couple of beauties here this one's just pushed up through the ground and we've got a tiny little baby one there look they make really good eating these little ones I mean you could leave them in the ground till they get much bigger which you probably should do but that's the size that's bigger than a supermarket mushroom so let's put it next to this one for a bit of a size comparison oh this has got a beautiful stem on it oh my gosh so you want to get the stem up as best you can look at that that's absolutely gorgeous two beautiful examples of a penny bun not to be confused with this that's growing close by or this one these are an amanita variety I think you can tell the difference because underneath oh no this is the uh, this is another um, bullet but this is looks like a, a stainer of some type but uh, whilst probably edible not very enjoyable we'll stick to these well we've ended up with quite the haul and some of these specimens are glorious I'm really pleased with this morning's forage so let's get these back to Harry Brew HQ and get them in the dehydrator so we're home this is our haul from today one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven beautiful porcinis now this one's my favorite this is how I like to get them you see how dry the cap is so that means it's absolutely fresh and it's had very very little insect activity on it now some of the other ones obviously they've been out in the morning dew and they're a little bit slimy but that's not a problem in fact now's the ideal time to wipe off any grass from the top but most of them are semi dry to dry and this one's a nice one too what I'm gonna do is just let these sit on the side here for the day while I go to work and then tonight I'll cut them up and prep them I'll let any insects that are on them crawl away but if we come across to our dehydrator and I pop it open now earlier on in the week Gemma and I went for a walk and these are the porcinis that we are in the process of drying just want to get these to the stage oh they're about ready just where they snap that's perfect actually so we've almost filled the dehydrator here I forgot to weigh it last time but I'll probably weigh the ones that we've got there and then we'll measure the dried weight as well 
but you can see they're absolutely beautiful examples of the style of the variety even then if I just go into the kitchen I'll be able to show you the finished product in fact I brought it out here because the lights a bit more natural at this time of day so this is a combination of porcini powder and porcini pieces and they are recognizable as you can see you quite clearly see that that's porcini but this stuff Oh my god, it just smells so meaty. So normally a tablespoon of this in any stew and it just completely changes it. So I think that amount of mushrooms there will dry down to a jar a little bit smaller than this. So let's just weigh them and then we'll call it a day on this video and I'll do the brew day video which I'm going to do at work today as a separate one. Right, we've got a scale on the go. I'll put the big ones in first. We're in millilitres, but that doesn't matter. Millilitres and grams are the same when it comes to weight. Oh, that's a big 200 grammer. Well, we're over the kilo mark. The last one. 1.362 grams so one 1 1.3 kilos that's a good haul we're going to lose a little bit to trimming so let's round it down to 1.3 kilos i'll trim these little bits of dirt and whatever else off and then we'll get it in the dehydrator that feels a bit soft and spongy there so we'll see how they look when we cut them but we'll get them in the dehydrator uh this evening and then we'll weigh them out tomorrow and see exactly what we got. So here we are, a full 24 hours later. Let's see what we've got. Now they've dried out beautifully, look at that. And listen to this. Oh yes, perfect, crisp. Let's get them in the scales and see what our harvest is. So we had 1.3 something kilograms as far as I can recall. And uh, it's actually been a little bit longer than 24 hours because I already had another batch in the dehydrator and these were a little bit wet on the top if you remember. So I actually let them dry out first uh, while I went to work and then I sliced them up on the evening of um, the day of harvest and the caps had firmed up a little bit and that that shiny, slimy appearance had gone away. I cut a little bit off, a few little damaged areas, but not a lot really. But other than that, it was a great harvest. And I tell you what, if you could smell, if you could smell this now, you would be blown away. But look at it all. If you're a big mushroom fan, this would be heaven. I'm not a huge mushroom fan. But porcinis tend to add something different to a dish that you don't get from what I'd probably call boring supermarket mushrooms. Wow, well, I can already see that from 1.3 kilos we have obliterated the weight of these beauties. Look at these. Look at the shapes. This is why it's important to get down to the stem when you pick a porcini mushroom. If you look at the shape of that, all of this down at the bottom, which is lovely stuff still, would have been part of the, possibly, the root system, if you like. And if you just chopped off at the stalk, then you, you're going to lose a fair old percentage of that shroom. Right, so we're almost there. I think we've got two or three more trays to go. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. Wow. We're not even at 100 grams yet. From 1.3 kilos. So it looks to me... There we go. We're just past 100 grams. 
So we need 130 grams to have lost 90% of the volume of these mushrooms. Nine zero, ninety percent gone to the atmosphere. I think we're on target for that by the looks of things. Hundred and twenty nine. Not hundred and thirty yet. Oh, it's just clicked over when I pulled the camera away. Of course it did. There we go, 142, 143 grams of porcini mushroom from 1.3 kilos to start with. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna squash it all. And squash it all up like this. We don't want it down to dust as much, but we don't want any huge pieces because we want this to kind of give an umami kind of vibe to any dishes that go that it goes into. It doesn't necessarily taste mushroomy when you use porcinis. Well, it tastes like porcinis. There we go. Just a few larger pieces to go. Now that... Oh, that smells wonderful. That's going to go in a jar. I've got a couple up here, that's last year's, and that is this year's. So we're gonna do the same with this. Another jar, we'll fill her up, and you end up with beautiful porcini mushrooms ready for cooking. I'm a lucky boy. Right guys, thanks a lot for watching. Keep liking, keep subscribing for quite a variety of videos on the channel, it would appear these days. Uh, so thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next video.